two, one. One of the aims of the permaculture movement, sort of the overall um, aim, is to create a permanent human culture on this planet that lives in harmony with the earth rather than destroying it. Um, what would you advise your permaculture teacher or permaculture activist anywhere in the world to get into in terms of using fungi um, as part of their permaculture practice? Well, I mean, this is why I write books. You know, the books are much more extensive than I can give in a short interview. So mycelium running, how much can help save the world, lays the foundation. And the book is like a, a key through doors, mm -hmm. which I hope other people will walk through and elaborate these concepts and discover that which nature's already discovered. We're rediscovering that which nature has already figured out. And I'm hoping that other people will be able to use this knowledge to be able to elaborate you know, and be better at using these fungi to help, the, help in the ecosystem. One thing that I think linear thinking um, is extremely dangerous and when looking at ecosystem design. And many of the <coughs> biggest dis uh, mistakes that are made, I think, in science today occurs at the beginning of the, the decision tree. I think we have to be uh, multi-directional in our approaches and realize that in, in the multi-directional approaches, they have influences upon each other and that we're part of this large community of, of activities, all of which have collaborative uh, effects upon each other. The problem with that concept is linear thinking, you want to find a cause and effect. And basically, we can have, humans can have a cause that have a multiplicity of effects that have feedback loops on, infinitely onto the subsequent effects, the derivative effects, and the original effect, us. And so this is where, you know, where first peoples in particular, and the use of sacramental plants, I think, has opened up the mind's eye t to the infinite possibilities of nature. And I think shamanistically, mushrooms have become powerful because they do open up the floodgates of the senses. They do take you into a larger dimension of integrative, uh, integrative roles of organisms within ecosystems. And I know when I've used magic mushrooms, I get the same constant theme, is that nature calls out to me. I hear all these species all around me rejoicing that I now am aware of them but at the same time giving me the same message. The earth is in trouble, don't you know, can't you see, do something. And so what I see is important within permaculture is to engage the concept of natural intelligence. These ecosystems are far more developed than any computer technology that we can even conceive. Through uh, 3.5 billion years of life on this planet, there's been experiments that have succeeded and, and failed, but we are here today because we're evolutionary success, as is all the other organisms. It's time for us to understand that the body intellect of each species has within it such powerful wisdom and knowledge that we need to be able to bring that together in a practical sense. And what I see a lot of people have their blinders on, and much of the analogy that I, I like to make, and it's very controversial for me to say this, but I'm not immune to con controversy, is that the people who are don't believe in global warming. I have a con I have a issue with the word belief. How can you not, it's not like you're believing in God or not believing in God. Global warming is a fact. Mm -hmm. You know, so some people say, oh, you know, don't believe in global warming. Mm -hmm. You know, I, that's the long, wrong language, long, wrong words to, to be used. But nevertheless, they use that. And it, it's the same uh, type of people, the same subculture that I think um, were flatlanders who didn't believe the earth was in a sphere. And then, uh, and then Galileo said the Earth is not the center of the universe, you know, and not the center of the solar system. And then he had to fight that. And I see the same sort of um, conservative um, individuals who don't want to see the progress of scientific and religious thought holding back to the old precepts and concepts, which limits his, limits uh, adventurous thinking. And one thing that is the pulse of evolution is is to push uh, concepts to the edge. And what these fungi do so well is they're edge runners. They're always at the interface environments and they're constantly exper experimenting. So if you had a, a totally homogenous environment, the ecosystem would be managed by the fungi. It'd be somewhat you know, ebbing and flowing and static. But as soon as there is an edge put into an environment, then the ecosystem is changed and that interface environments with these fungi come up with very novel and elegant solutions to be able to put into practice. So, we face a tremendous crisis ecologically on this planet. 
there are some of us who can see it, who believe in it, who know that we have to take action, and there are other people who are in disbelief. And it's like being on a, on a boat going down, on a raft going over the Niagara Falls. There's a few people on this boat that are paddling like heck, you know, to prevent us from going over Niagara Falls, and there's other people who are sitting back saying, ah, oh, it's not important. And unfortunately, if I had my way, there'd be a, a division between the people who are helping the people who aren't. And the people who aren't, I wish they lived on a different planet, personally. But be that as it may, here we are. And I think our mission is to convince the skeptics, and this is where I think I've done a pretty good job at times, is my greatest supporters now were my former, for my former skeptics. Mm. And the fact that these people who are so skeptical are now convinced that we are on a path that's worthy of merit, I think, is a strong endorsement. We need to get more of the skeptics you know, on our side of the fence so they can be active in thinking about the consequences of their activities. So we protect downstream generations and habitats from the actions that we're, we're doing today. Can you give a couple of specific examples of